Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a bit of a special thing here for the propaganda cast. A sort of state of the balance thing. You know, occasionally I get asked, what's my thought of the balance? Will I post on it? Well, figure now, let's try making a video. And let's try making one for May month. It's June now, of course. You know, you know no point in making it before May is over. So, there will be a video with my perspective on the state of the balance on the game. Based on May month alone, largely. Maybe some other thoughts here and there. And of course, if it's liked, I'll do more of those. I might make none for June, though that'll probably just be before the expansion hits. Otherwise, I mean, that's going to completely muck it up. Though again, I might wait to sort of the expansion out so we get a quick one out there, but still. And then so on, so on. So I mean, if there's a great sort of interest in that, I'll do it. If not, I'll stop. Of course, we'll have to see how it works out, but still, you know, opinions asked. Let's have at it. So, what are things rather sort of been like in May for me? Well, from my perspective, playing the game. Watching replays largely, I mean, I go through a lot of replays every day, so that rather gives me some impressions of my own, of course, and you're of course free to dispute, but to a certain extent it rather feels like German play has rather a sort of sense shrunk in compared to Russian play. With Soviets you'll see, you know, builds heavy on Stravniki or penal troops, you'll see Maxims, you'll see snipers, you'll see conscripts, you'll see doctors sort of be playing out all sorts. I mean, you'll still see, you know, Lend-Lease being used actively and so on, but compared to that with the Germans, you're seeing a lot less. I mean, mechanized assault has gone through a bit of a renaissance after this. I mean, that's great. You'll see more assault guns. You'll see the Stugi, you'll see mechanized assault groups. That's grand, but also to some extent, one slight issue is you're also seeing pretty much only tigers. I mean, there was a bit of initially, but now for the Germans, it's largely just turned into Colin's relying on the tigers, tiger commanders, or elephant tank destroy command if you're talking team games have rather taken over to a frighteningly large degree. I mean when the the Germans things have gotten a lot more predictable when you're fighting against them at the Soviets you'll see largely a lot of grenadiers, maybe assault grenadiers, maybe a single MG forty two, but not an awful lot else, maybe a mortar if you're lucky. Then they'll aim for a scout car, maybe a pack, no panzer grenadiers though, maybe a half track, maybe I mean, they do see a bit more usage in some regards. I mean, they're a bit more helpful now, but still, Panzer Gun is largely out. Largely out. Except if the player is intending to get Panzer Shreks, because otherwise, they just don't do much. I've seen it again and again. They might get a few kills, but overall, compared to the Gunadier squad, in particular, upgrade with the light machine gun, they simply don't quite follow up. They simply don't do enough, in particular, considering their price point. So that's rather unfortunate in many regards, and certainly I think the Panzer Gunners need a bit of looking into, but at the same time, even there, the German Tier 1, again, so much more now dependent on Gunners, you'll just see player scouts go for the Gunners over and over again with little else. And of course, one might say, well, isn't that just the Gunners are too effective, but at the same time, quite the question not be, is it not that maybe they're the only thing which is really effective anymore? I think that's rather it. MG42s nowadays get so quickly up manoeuvred. They lose out to Maxims, which are much more mobile, much more durable. Surprise so about the same. The only thing the MG42 really has is damage, but even that range, it's negligible compared to what a Canadier squad does at the same cost and a lot less likely to get wiped out. And it's really something you need to. S this is a bit the problem for the Germans. You need to sort of have a compound amount of damage to the Russians, and it's not quite coming in. In particular, the conscripts themselves got a bit more of a range, but things got a bit more ugly for the Germans in some departments. So MD42s have largely fallen up. More to still see some units. The sniper, some usage occasionally, but even he's rather fallen up because, well, he 360 manpower, great, but well, you know, one mistake and he's dead. Very, very quickly taken out by, say, a few conscripts appearing, even combat engineers, of course, a Soviet sniper team. So that rather also makes him a lot less attractive, in particular again at that price point. So he's another thing I would describe as a bit of a issue. Though, of course, another thing that rather has given the Soviets a bit of an advantage is their mines. I mean, there were a great change to splash damage, and the Soviet miners really benefited from that. It rather went from being all right naughty to pretty much being lethal. They quite commonly now get full squad wipes. I think that's rather pushing it. In particular, considering they're only 30 munitions, the way they're so quite often utterly wiping out entire units is a bit much. And I would definitely suggest that splash damage be looked into and act as sort of hold it down because they're quite too effective right now and it can easily sort of end up really hurting a German player initially and again that sort of also on things at least I sort of feel like when I'm playing as a Russian so but also playing as the Germans you know it's a lot lot easier to contain the German player nowadays than it is for the German player to contain a Soviet player so that also creates some rather ugly situations I feel 
Though of course that might just be my imagination, of course just my perspective on things and matters. But again, it's just a lot of grenadiers. I mean, right here, four grenadier squads, one assault grenadier squad. What's not there? No MG42s, no mortars, no snipers. And that's rather sort of the dominant picture for a lot of things. Occasionally there might be one MG42, but largely it's sort of fallen to the wayside. Scout cars, of course, also becoming a lot more prominent. They can do a lot of damage at range. They've got, you know, nice armor, so they can actually sort of slug it out with a grenadier squad. So essentially, they're light tanks thrown some units, maybe a flamethrower, and they can actually be quite a pain and quite difficult for a German player to actually contain if the Soviet player is reasonably aggressive. Of course, they can still take some damage from sort of shots, but that rather requires, again, you know, a large force weaving in, in which case a scout car weaves out and deals with something else elsewhere. And there we go again. Mine went off. Heavy losses right there. That was almost three squads in one go. That's quite the explosion, of course. You shouldn't blow up, but even then, that seems excessive. So scout cars, I think, might have need a small arm and earth. They're just small, not too much. Of course, the 222's also gotten heavily overdone, so maybe there might also be a need to look into that just a bit. But again, with the scout cars, I think we're just looking at small tweaks. Though I think another issue again is basically the reliance on call-ins, as I sort of mentioned with the Tiger. In particular for the Germans, things are rather centered around the Tiger tank. You'll still see Panzer Force, you'll see these two, you even see Ostrans now more, because, well, they've actually been made cheaper and are thus a bit more reliable, but a lot of players basically aim for the Tiger, because in the end, economically, I mean, if you look at the bigger picture overall, you're essentially about if you go for a Panzer IV, for example, or the amount of resource you end up paying to go for it ends up being almost the same as you go for getting a Tiger. In terms of fuel, in terms of manpower, and of course getting one Tiger compared to getting one Panzer IV, and well, you get a lot more bang for your buck. Of course, getting more Tigers is, you know, a bit more expensive in the longer run, but at the same time, you know, you still end up with a lot more firepower. So it can't, and that sort of even further applies further on, because you're seeing even less Panthers, you're seeing even less Stuart on Panzer IVs. I mean, it's largely fallen into the wayside. I mean, occasionally it might seem a team game, but that's rather now falling into Tigers and Elephant Tank Destroyers, although the Elephant still manages to fail spectacularly half the time, so I don't know why people bother personally. But really, Panthers in 1 vs 1 games, extremely rare. Sturm Panzer Force, even rarer. Same with Panzer Vevers. I mean, the last tier for the Germans, I mean, considering again the sort of economic changes have simply become too high, in particular because while the Soviets initially also got some changes, that's sort of how taking up handle for them, they actually got them slightly eased off. The Germans didn't. So in that department, German economy is not quite, I feel, balanced there, and certainly there's very little incentive to go for Tier 4, in particular in just going for some Doctrine Armour, which largely means a Tiger tank. And of course, if you're fighting then versus Soviet Doctrine Armour, you're really fighting behind, because again, for them, it's just even more viable just aim for calling tanks. Germans, T-34s on IS-2, in particular, of course, you can keep up the pressure early on, which, again, is rather easy for the Soviets at the moment, I feel. And, well, the Tiger ends up being rather one of the few options you, as the German player, has to fight back with. And, again, that's largely also what I'm seeing, you know, just player spamming Tigers, or player spamming T-3045s, or Sherman tanks, or IS-2s. I mean, you'll still see a Soviet player, for example, going for tanks regularly because, again, ultimately they're not so heavily constricting sometimes in terms of taking our field, but also, again, the early game advantage rather feels more towards them. So, rather that, but of course, at the same time, we're also seeing a lot less, you know, the mechanized armor company. It was there, but seems again to have fallen out in favor completely in compared to call ins. I mean, the S35s, of course, will still be an excellent counter, for example, to Tiger tanks, and the S76 is still reasonably handy, so there's Katusha, but still, it's also fallen a bit back behind there. Might need a bit looking into that, would not suggest too much again. I rather think it's got more to do with the fact that, again, call ins are too effective at the moment, that is, economically much, much to effect, and I'd rather think that's where some effort needs to be looked into. My two suggestions would rather be actually imposing a penalty, basically saying, if you call in, say, a Tiger tank, you don't have the heavy armor core, well, you're going to have to pay an extra price for it. Otherwise, the second suggestion would actually be forcing a player to then have, say, something like a fuel cache for, say, every two doctrinal medium tanks, or for one for every doctrinal heavy tank, you know, you need a fuel cache. And you might say, well, what sense would that make? Again, 
it would, one, restrict the player in having to expend more resources towards getting some doctrine armor, but at the same time, it would also create a target the opponent could harass. I mean, again, a fuel cache can't be built on the base, it would have to be out on the field. And of course, if the opponent spots it, he could also then realize, hmm, maybe my opponent is going for a doctrinal strategy, and then, of course, he can disrupt it by wrecking the fuel cache, and that would rather be my thoughts there. Of course, for lesser things like the mechanized assault group and so on, not really necessary, but still, a quick thought there on top of that. Because I do think it's rather gone a bit too much towards Collins. Again, medium armor largely getting neglected, in particular German, and in particular the heavy Panzer Corps is very much neglected in comparison at the moment. Of course, some doctrines also see more play with the Cert Germans, so again, it's rather fun towards the Tiger Commanders. Elite, co elite Troops is actually surprisingly not used. Give out for the fees. Barely see any usage at the moment. I think that might also have hit a bit too hard there, alongside Panzer Grenadiers and other units. So that's a bit unfortunate. The Tiger is, though, is practically not there. Again, the Tiger regular now seems to be the thing for the moment, which is rather interesting to note. So that, of course, is also a little fun to keep in mind. Of course, like machine guns, those are rather popular, though, of course, at the same time, they're a bit more delayed. And again, I can't help but also wonder, maybe they should be just removed so you don't have to take up to them, because they're a lot more sort of necessary to have a slight advantage early on, he's still on the ground. But again, I mean, doctrinal armor, doctrinal stuff, lots more versus the Tiger for the Soviets. Again, it's a bit more variety, though. A bit more variety, though, again, it rather falls towards the ones for the T-35s or the Shermans at the moment. Maybe some KB-1s, maybe not. But largely towards, again, a few, few specific doctrines, though less are uh, centered around heavy armor. I mean, the ice 2 is actually surprisingly gone quiet, which is actually interesting to note. On the other hand, the ISU has made a bit of a strong return. In fact, it's extremely difficult to deal with that at the moment due to the range and the sheer firepower. I mean, it handles infantry well, it handles armor well. It makes it a really nasty thing to deal with if properly supported, compared to the elephant, which has seen a resurgence, but which doesn't really perform in the same way. It can only really deal with armor, and overall, when I see it used, I also usually see it fail horribly. So I can't help but feel again, you know, rather, again, only confirms to me that the elephant is a piece of junk. I mean, I'd rather prefer at least had some minor anti-infantry capability. So there was a bit, at least, you know, slight reason to get it beyond just wrecking enemy tanks. So there's also something slightly there to keep in mind. But I mean, overall, I mean, if the German player, for example, does reach tier 3, I mean, sure, you'll see a bit more variety of armor. It's not just Panzer Force Bam anymore. Thank the heavens, Stugs are reasonably more popular again, but it's rather getting there. And also, one question might be, maybe some of the costs here should be changed just a bit. I'm not suggesting a huge slash in cost, but still, maybe just a bit cheaper for some of the taking up, because it rather feels a bit too restrictive at the moment. Maybe some slight manpower, just a tad off the fuel, just a tad. And I think we could see something a bit more interesting, because again, German play is extremely limited very much much at the moment, and you don't really see an awful lot besides Grenadier Spam, maybe some light machine guns, but even then, not so much, because again, a lot of player roles just plop down S mines everywhere, because they end up being rather cost effective for what they do, which is grand, but again, one feels, you know, a lot of things have fallen to the wayside at the moment for the Germans, they've gotten extremely limited, which I find is very unfortunate. I mean, again, compared to the Soviets, which do feel a lot less restricted at the moment. So I would rather say, I mean, I'm not going to say it's completely skewed, but it certainly feels a bit awkward that for the Germans, they have a lot less to deal with. Though I'm still happy Assault Gun is actually a, a, worth a damn at the moment, which is grand, but again, some things are not. I'd certainly suggest looking into maybe making the MD-42 a bit better and maybe making the Maxim a bit less mobile. Same maybe with the Soviet Mortar. I mean, those slides so Mortar crews are a bit tricky to deal with, and you certainly can't quite off get the same surprise as you can with a Soviet weapon, well, catching a German weapon off guard. So those are definitely some of my thoughts there as well. Yes, my pardon again if it's a bit scattermind. It's, it's my first time, so you know. Of course I'd get better at structuring it all, and so on, but still. Those are largely my thoughts at the moment. I mean, again, German play much more limited if you basically want it sort of, you know, really condensed. German play a lot more limited now. So play a lot stronger in particular early game. It's let these sort of hold things down. Call-ins, I feel, 
overrepresented again, particularly for the Germans, because economically it's... It ends up being the most viable choice half the time, since again, taking up is now much more expensive and ends up draining out all resources compared to, you know, just waiting for coins. And again, if the so player just relies on coins overall, economically, he tends to end up with the advantage in some cases. I mean, you can still push now, which of course there's a bit more than before, but still, if the so player keeps up a reasonable solid pressure early on, it's a lot harder. And again, there's not a lot for the Germans to really push out with anymore. Again, this, for example, barely there. Grenadier MG's mortars barely there. Half tax still there, but also maybe a bit expensive. They could maybe do with a slight manpower slashing cost. So I mean, that's largely it. My thoughts on balance. My thoughts on what might need some improvement. What could do with some fixing. And some looking into. I mean, both sides need some looking into. Some things could be buffed. Some things nerfed. Though again, I rather think the priority for German sort of making things more viable because I think well the one of the issues with the Germans at the moment simply a lot of things aren't it. They aren't worth it. They aren't viable. Panzer Grenadiers definitely not worth it. MG forty twos, I mean if players keep spamming grenadiers, you know, again it could be grenadiers are good, but then again it could just be nothing else really holds up in the longer run. I certainly don't fear an MG forty two as much as I used to, for example. So those are some things to keep in mind. So there you go. I hope you've well, thoughts, got some thoughts there out of it. Hopefully you might agree with some things. Maybe not. You know, feel free to discuss it in the comments. You know, come in with your own suggestions, your own thoughts. And if there's certainly something you like, you know, and certainly agree with, you know, also feel free to point out. Feel free to share where you know, tell Ray, like, oh, hey, Dane's actually got some good points here. Would be really cool if you listened to him, in which case, of course, that's most appreciated. So if you enjoyed, you know, feel free to let me know. Feel free to share it with everyone. And let as many people see it as humanly possible. If not, you know, also let me know, and also let me know if you don't really find this interesting and you just want me to shut the hell up and just keep commenting games regularly, then I will also do so. So, this is Imperial Dane saying cheers, hope you learned something, or hopefully got some thoughts therein as well, and I'm off.